Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to learn more about the YEC portal. We built this tutorial because we think it can become a really useful tool for our partners and we hope that it saves you a lot of time and makes your lives easier. There's really three things that we're going to cover uh, on this tutorial. The first is the key benefits of using it. The second is the nuts and bolts of how to use the portal, executing the event, and then lastly, all of the resources we've created to help you uh, along the way. And we broke out this video into chapters in case there are things that you might already know how to do. You can just skip ahead to whatever it is you want to learn by looking in the description of the video below. We've identified kind of the three biggest points. These aren't the only benefits of using the portal, but these would be like our top three. The first is capturing all the information for students, teachers, and judges in one place. That can be a challenge and it's so nice to have that all together and easily accessible. And the second is gathering executive summaries from students and then sending those to judges. A lot of times it's done like on paper or through emails and it can be a real mess to organize all of that and the portal makes that very, very simple. And lastly, doing the live scoring, adding up all the scores from all the judges on the day of the event can be stressful because there's a lot of other stuff going on. And the really nice thing about this is it all of the scores as they're entering, the scores auto-populate. So let's talk about how to use the portal. Obviously, to begin, you have to create an account. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And you're going to go to, uh, if you want to start, you can start at our Network Kansas and find the eCommunity link. <coughs> Scroll to Youth, and you'll see the YEC event portal. When you click on that, it'll open in a new tab. And it's here you're going to select the user type. There's partner, judge, student, and teacher. The creating an account is exactly the same for all four of those. Uh, you're a partner or an organizer of the event, so you'll click partner. It's going to ask you to log in, and you haven't created an account yet, so you don't know your email address or password. So you need to click sign up there at the bottom. You'll fill out the information here. Where I'm going to make up a new person named Roger Partner. Click Submit, then you'll return to the Getting Started page, and now you have an email address and password that you can use to log in. I always click Remember Me because I hate remembering passwords. And from here, you can access the portal. So after we've created an account, now we need to create a YC competition. To do this, you have to fill out a sanction form and be approved by Network Kansas. I'll show you how to do that. First, we'll start on the profile drop down where you can see all of your account details and then your events. You won't have any, so let's create one. Call it a cool new competition. And you can click save and continue. The sanction form is split over three pages. So let's say you don't know the answer to something, or you don't have time right now. When you go to your events, it'll be saved as a draft so you can come back to it later. And the first page is straightforward, so I'll fast forward through this. And the second page, we have some things about the schools and the teachers that are going to be participating. Uh, we have a dat we have the public school database for all of Kansas, so every public school is in there. But if you don't find your school, you can add it with the little plus button. And then we're going to ask how many teachers are going to be participating. And the teachers that appear in the drop down. Are already have accounts with those schools, but if they don't show up, you can just add them with the plus button. And the same thing, if the school doesn't, you can add the plus button as well. Everything else, I think, is pretty straightforward. Page three asks questions about the competition details, like the dates, the components that you're going to be using, how many people you expect to participate. And that's pretty straightforward. So once you've submitted that, uh, it sends an email to Network Kansas, and your event is pending, so you won't be able to enter the event portal, but once it's approved by Network Canvas, you'll get an automated email, and this little spot here will say approved like magic. You can enter the event portal and begin managing your event. So once we're in the event portal, we can start customizing the competition. Uh, we'll start on the event details page. And this is basically all the information you filled out on the sanction form. Uh, if any of it's wrong or you want to change it, you can use the edit link there. 
The next thing we'll do is we'll set deadlines and upload. So there's two questions. Do you want to upload executive summaries and do you want students to upload PowerPoint presentations? The default is no, but we're gonna change that to yes. And we're gonna say the deadline to upload the executive summary is October 8th and the same for the PowerPoints. It's important to remember these deadlines basically lock students out. So once those deadlines pass, students won't be able to register, upload executive summaries or their PowerPoint. So keep that in mind. And then the last part is you can customize the components and then the weights for each one. So right now it's set to balance, so they're all equally weighted, but you could customize that if you want. So we've created the event, now we want to invite people to participate. So we've created a page called Students and Teachers. This shows you the schools that are in your community and the teachers connected to them. So you can click on a link and it'll give you their details if you need to contact them. Uh, if a school is missing, you can add the school with this link here. And then below are all the entrepreneurs that have created accounts in, in this community. So they either go to Andover Central or Andover High, and you can see kind of where they are and some information about them. So the exclamation points show that like Belia Bray has not created a business or registered for an event. So you could reach out to her teacher. Um, same thing here below. And let's say you can't find a student in the database. Maybe they're a homeschooler or they didn't select a school. You can use the database to search. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find our custom link for the cool new competition. So you click the YC series, you click cool new competition, and this is your link right here that you can share. So once you've shared that link with students and judges, they're gonna start registering and those registrations will show up on here. So you can see there's information for, these are the student businesses. You can see the business name, uh, their, their registration status, their entrepreneur. You can take a look at their executive summary. You can download these or open them right here in the portal. You can see the time they registered uh, and the same is true for the judge information. You can see their status and the timestamp. So let's say you want to approve someone to attend. You click approved and then the exclamation point turns to a check mark. That would take a little while so we created approve all. So you can just click there and that'll approve all the business registrations and the same thing for the judges. Uh, this could take 10 or 15 seconds. I sped it up a little bit. It depends on your internet. And let's say that, okay, so everyone's approved, but then we find out that 123 Warehousing decided they can't participate, so we're gonna deny them. This will prevent judges from emptying scores for them. Uh, and now you can see they've disappeared. Now it's one of 24, and they're not on the screen. But let's say they've changed their mind and we wanna find them again. We'll just clear that filter, and then they show up, and we can reapprove them. So you didn't delete them, you just hit them, and now they show up again, and they will be prepared to be assigned to be judged. So once we've approved all the judges that are gonna participate, we need to tell them what to do and assign them students and components to judge. So the very first question we're gonna ask, it's under the judge setup uh, link right here. Are any of our components gonna be split into groups or let me give you an example for the trade show. We're gonna have two sets of judges, judge one half of students and the other set judge the other half or are all the trade show judges gonna see all the students? If the answer is yes to any of those components, you're gonna click yes. And when you do that, you'll see uh, each component pop down below and you can decide how many groups you'll have for each component. For, for this example, we're just gonna do a simple event and just say that all components have one group. Um, but if you have questions about that or if you have a complex event, I think it would be good to talk with your e-community point person because they could be really helpful in getting you prepared to do that. So let's go back to judge assignments. Uh, we're gonna have a simple event. We've got 25 businesses registered and approved and, and 17 judge registrations. I've already pre-assigned many of the judges to components and I left one for us. So we're gonna assign Jacob Hemmer to the four minute presentation. And when we do that, you'll see his name pop down below. Basically, now that means that Jacob is, when he logs into the portal, he's gonna be assigned to judge the four minute presentation, the same as 
for the executive summary judges and the trade search judges. They're only able to judge the ones that you assign them to. And you can even assign them to more than one or even every component in your competition. So once you've assigned the judges to the components they're going to do, the scores are going to start rolling in and you can view those on the scoring overview. You can see below the four component options. So we'll start with the executive summaries. Below is a table of all the scores that have been submitted, broken down by business and judge. The business is in the gray bar along the top and then the judge names are below. You can see ABC Telecom. You can see the timestamp for each one, the scores they've submitted, the comments. And then you can also edit and delete scores here, and deleting is permanent, so it's good to keep that in mind. Right here is the score approval. It's set to no right now. It, there's really two things that matters. When it's set to no, it means that the judges can still edit the scores and students cannot see it. When it's approved by you, it means the opposite. It means judges can no longer edit the scores, but students can now log in and access the, their scores in the portal. So there might be a time where you want to take all of the scores and look at them in a spreadsheet, in which case you can just click export and you'll have the option as a comma CSV file and that will let you open it in Excel. You can also filter all of the scores using the search. Uh, let's say we want to look at Allied Biscuit. So we type in Ally, we can find that. You can also search by judge name or use any of the filters. Let's go to the elevator pitch so as you can see here, uh, there's an alert right at the top because this event did not include elevator pitches, but a score has still been submitted. And this could happen for a number of reasons. Maybe there was an elevator pitch at one time, but they decided not to have it. So let's just go ahead and delete the score. So we'll go back out of elevator pitch and then go back into it just to see what the alert says now. And it's not yellow, which is good. It says does not include elevator pitches, so you're good. Look at the formal presentation scores. You can see there's six out of 200 scores remaining. Same thing for trade show. You can figure out how many scores are remaining. It looks all about the same. So let's say all the scores are in and we want to approve them so that students can see them. We have a handy dandy approve all scores link. You click on that and then it'll take maybe a second or two, but they'll be approved. You can also approve them one by one using the edit link. So the leaderboard is where you can get a great snapshot of the event so far and who's winning and what's going on. So right off the bat, you can see the scoring system, the rubrics, uh, it tells you the weight of each component and then how many scores have been completed for each component. Below, you can see all the businesses ranked by the overall score. So Acme Corp is in first and you can see the icons here represent the blue represents in process so they haven't completed all the scores and the green represents completed because it's a check mark the gray circles represent they have not received any scores yet so they've not started yet uh, let's go ahead and click on abc telecom because they've completed all their scores and let's take a look so every business you can click on their link to see their profile and tells them information about them, how many scores are remaining, and you can see all of their scores. This is the second place you can edit and delete scores when you see them. Uh, let's go ahead and add an executive summary score for ABC Telecom. So you can add scores for any of the students. You select the judge, we'll do Antonio Judge. And then right here in the details, now there's, there's six scores that have been submitted and you can see that it's six out of five. And when we go to the leaderboard, we get a warning because ABC Telecom has received too many scores and we can just click on their name again. And we'll see they have six when they should have five. Antonio Judd entered a duplicate and we can delete the score. And we should all be flush. And I think I saw another duplicate, Seth Burke entered a duplicate, so we'll delete that too. So when we return to the leaderboard, it's back to normal, all's fine. Another cool thing that you can do is customize the overall score. So occasionally events will have rules like if you turn your executive summary in late, we're going to discount you by five points, for instance. I'll do that for Acme Corp. 
And now their overall score has been docked five points, moving them down. And now a little flag will appear in that column notifying you that there were custom additions or subtractions to the overall score. Another thing I want to show you is that you can print the leaderboard whenever you want. Uh, so you can get a snapshot here and print it out, which is a nice feature. Most of the pages can be printed. You just have to look for the print link in the top right corner. In the years that we've done YUC, it's been great to gather all these resources from our partners and then create some of our own. And it's nice to have a central place to share all of these uh, with our partners. So we've broken them down into categories. We've got planning, best practices, education, all sorts of resources. And I'm going to show you a couple here. Um, on the planning side, we have like, timelines and frequently asked questions for best practices. We have tons of categories you can download, just a whole guide that has everything. And we have things for marketing where you can get press releases, PDFs, templates of marketing materials other uh, competitions have used in the past. And you can download all of these with those links. We even have best practices for how to work with teachers and students and judges. When you're working with teachers and students, we have great educational resources. Uh, we have videos that students can watch, that teachers can use, stuff specific to each component, like how to write an executive summary, how to give an elevator pitch with, with a video, and how to give a formal presentation uh, with the scorecard and stuff done by the Coffin Foundation that's really valuable. And then a lot of students have questions about what to do with a trade show. And so we've included pictures of past trade shows and what they can expect. We hope that all of these resources help empower you to put on the best event and help the students feel like they can be confident when they're competing. Thanks again for taking time out of your day to learn about the YC portal. I hope it's incredibly helpful.